me if you want to live. You just don't turn it off! Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason, you're watching Backtrack Cinema, and today we're going to go through my top 30 80s slasher films. Now, back in May, I was watching a lot of 80s slasher films. I wasn't sure if I was going to do a top 50 slasher ranking or just a underrated 80s slasher ranking, so I ultimately went with 30 slasher films from the 80s. I did my top 10 80s slasher films, which... You know, it was it's, it's a lot of popular slasher films from the 80s. So this allowed me to go into more of the underrated ones. And I watched a shitload, man. I watched a shitload of slasher flicks. So comment down below. Let me know some of your favorite 80s slasher films, even the underrated ones. Hit the like button if you like this kind of content. And uh, let's get to it, guys. Now coming at number 30 is Hell Knight. So this stars Linda Blair bunch of p kids having a halloween party they go up to this you know haunted mansion type place you know and the house and the production de design's all good in that and there's a legend of a someone who's deformed in there and um it certainly can be entertaining i get that but i found myself a little bored with the movie uh, I did like Linda Blair in the movie. I did like some of the other cast in the movie. Kills weren't ex exceptionally uh, memorable at all, but, you know, I still... It was okay. It was okay, so that's why it sits at number 30. Coming at number 29 is Terror Train. So this was a first-time watch. This Canadian slasher film starring Jamie Lee Curtis. Starts off like a lot of slasher films does. A prank going horribly wrong. Somebody wants revenge. If it takes place on this train... You know, kids partying on the train and everything. Now, I will say Jamie Lee Curtis definitely elevates this material. If she wasn't in it, I probably would have made this list. But, you know, she has that charisma. She has that, you know, she's just a great actress, even even back then. Kills weren't ex exceptionally good at all, again. You know, but I did like the whole magic show stuff going on through this whole thing. I thought that was cool. I did like the grimy, gritty-ness of, of the film. The reveal of the killer, I think, was pretty weak. Didn't really do a whole lot for me. But, you know, seeing Jamie Lee Curtis having this magic show aesthetic, I think, um, what kept me watching on this movie. Coming at number 28 is Hospital Massacre, or I think it's also called X-Ray. So this is uh, a canon film, actually. One of the early canon films where they're diving deep into horror. Um, now it's been a while since I watched this. It was only a first time watch, but I did like the whole move the mood of the film in the hospital and everything. You'll see another hospital movie much higher on this list, but um, this did keep me engaged. I thought thought the killer was a little weak. Uh, the guy going around killing everybody in this hospital, but this one woman goes in just for you know to get an X-ray update to talk to her doctor, and they keep her there. Things go horribly wrong, and I did like that. I think if you already got a fear of hospitals, like a lot of people do, I hate hospitals and everything like that, this movie really playing into that fear. I did think the kills were okay in this. There were some pretty good kills in it, and it's also a Valentine's Day movie was as well. So kept me engaged. Um, not the greatest slasher, you know what I mean, but uh, not the greatest villain um, once we know who he is and everything like that. But when he's just kind of out there, you don't really know who he is. He's in the shadows or, he's, you know, he's got because he's got the, the doctor's mask on and everything. But I don't get many slasher hospital movies. So it's not, you know, terribly bad. But, you know, I think it could have been better. Coming at number 27 is Pieces. Now, I did review this movie. This is a wacky, crazy ass Spanish, I think, slasher film. <laughs> and it's 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 just crazy. But the kills are awesome. It's so over the top. It's so bad that. You're so entertained by it. Another slasher who done it, but I guess it keeps you guessing enough to keep you entertained. Some wacky shit, a balls to the wall ending. Literally, when he freaking gets his balls ripped off, our our main character here, and there's that funny moment where there, our main blonde lead here is like going, "Bastard, kill them, you bastard!" Just hilarious stuff in here. But man, you know who says you have to go to uh texas to have a chainsaw massacre this kind of tagline of the film it's absolutely right but uh you know this one has its fans it has its fans i when i reviewed it i found there's a lot of people who like this movie it's definitely in the cult status so 
There we have it, pieces. Coming at number 26 is The Prowler. This was a film that's directed by Joseph Zito. And, you know, I just found it had a real big pacing problem. It was kind of boring. Um, it was kind of obvious who the killer was. Not enough really memorable characters for me. Not that I need a whole lot of characters in a slasher film, but kills were awesome in this. The shower kill was pretty awesome. I think there was a shotgun blast. Um, heads exploding and shit like that and and tom savini putting on some of his best work here i do like the look of the the our, our villain here the army you know army soldier from like the the 40s or whatever kind of like um almost the my bloody valentine kind of look not the minor exactly but a war soldier so he has a knife and he's and you know what that's something i think a lot more slasher movies they could tap into is a crazy, you know, war soldier kind of villain. I think they could have extended the Prowler or maybe you um, may maybe remake this thing one day. It all takes a place around a college dorm. There are dance and our and our final girl here. It's got to be the nosiest bitch I've ever seen in a horror film. She's just snooping around things, you know, snooping around people's offices, trying to find things and stuff like that. And she's a weak final girl for me. I didn't find her terribly resourceful or terribly interesting, but so... But great kills and a great look for the villain. Coming at number 25 is My Bloody Valentine. Now, I am warming up to this movie. Over time, this movie could go more up on this list. You know, when I first watched it, I, I was like, I don't I don't get it. I don't get why people love this movie so much. But each watch on scene, the more charm to it. Um, and that is the characters, I think. I think, you know, it's, out, it's supposed to be out in the East Coast. They filmed it in Canada, Nova Scotia, or somewhere around there i really like the blue color characters that are in this movie they're not terribly great characters but there's one character the real big guy in it you know with the, with the real kind of handlebar mustache i thought he was a great character you know just a bunch of kids who just want to go out there you know have fun party and all that there's little love triangle it is your valentine's day horror so that's always cool um i've always been a bigger fan of the remake in this movie and the remake does kind of like a switcheroo so you wouldn't guess what happened in the original so you know guys fighting over women teenagers trying to have fun you know they can't go to the dance because of harry warden our killer the miner as we like to call him just the look of the miner is really cool too he's got the pickaxe he does look pretty menacing when he's out in those when he's out in the, the mines and everything like that and the kills are awesome but you got to get the unrated version if you watch the unrated version, you got a lot of kills, a lot of great kills that were just like the movie was just butchered by the MPAA or at the time or whatever have you, right? But uh, I am warming up to this movie. I think it does have some great 80s charm. So coming at number 24 is Sweet 16. Now, this one surprised me. I was searching Tubi. I found this one. It, it looked completely budget. I was surprised how much I enjoyed this one. This has Dana Kimmel from Friday the 13th Part 3. She was also in the Chuck Norris movie, Lone Wolf McQuaid. And her father is the sheriff of this town trying to solve these murders. And, you know, she's another one kind of nosy in this one. She wants to know. She's, like, obsessed with, like, murder books. And she wants to be... She's like a little fucking Nancy Drew, this girl. And what happens is that a, a new girl comes into town and whoever gets close to her, boyfriend, whatever have you, ends up getting killed. And our victims are usually killed around, you know, the, the land of uh, Native Americans. So it has, you know, so they're pointing their fingers to this one Native American and all that kind of stuff. And but I was surprised how much I liked that. You could almost put Chuck Norris in this film, but the guy who does play him, plays her father, plays the sheriff, does a really good job. And, you know, he's a good dad. You know, he's got he's got a son and his daughter. He's just got a real warmth and a charisma to him. I'm not going to sit here and tell you guys the reveal of everything because the reveal was actually pretty good. It was actually pretty decent. So I suggest you hunt this one on Tubi and watch it yourself. And uh, I don't know. I think I think you'll be pleasantly surprised on this one. It doesn't have great kills, though. Um, it is a slasher. or I look at it more of a, a, a murder mystery kind of movie, but it doesn't have the greatest kills but it does have uh, a little bit of character development you do get some character development in in this um characters that you can latch on to and you know a fairly decent story i was pleasantly surprised about this one coming at number 23 is the burning this one i've always uh, i reviewed this one too i've always liked this one i always like a camp slasher 
And, you know, you actually got kids at this camp getting into trouble and everything. It's a bit of a sleazy fucking movie. But Cropsy the Killer is awesome. Again, Tom Savini dishing out some awesome kills in this movie. Like The raft scene is awesome. One of the greatest moments in horror when he comes up from the raft and he starts killing everyone with uh, hedge clippers. You know what I mean? Um, some some douchebag characters, but some other ones are not too bad. Your typical revenge sl slasher fleck. I mean, a lot of people are big fans of this one. But if you like the camp slashers like Friday the 13th, you're going to love this one. Coming at number 22 is Blood Rage. Another one I reviewed. This one's just campy, schlocky, fun, man. You do not take this one seriously. It's horror comedy. But it starts off with a really good axe kill to the face at a drive-in theater. Where this kid kills this other dude in the theater and then the wrong brother you know there's two brothers one brother gets sent to a mental asylum right who is the wrong brother and the, the other brother is the you know the psycho one it's just a whole lot of fun it's one of those ones that it's so bad that you got to keep watching that it's good you know what i mean if you like real campy 80s horror comedy kind of stuff you'll like this one over the top acting that would just it's just gonna forget it's hilarious i mean how over the top this movie is but a cool concept, you know, I do like the concept. This is one of those movies that I think you could remake. You could remake it into something serious, and I think it could work. So, uh, Hunt Down Blood Rage. Coming in at number 21 is The House on Sorority Row. Now, I did really like this movie. Um, I thought, you know, these bunch of girls, you know, closing up their uh, the sorority house, and the house mother is just an evil queen, but we find out more about her. Um, the movie starts off with black and white to see her past a bit, but they play, they want to play a prank on the house mother. It goes horribly wrong. It's kind of like a Friday the 13th where the son's taking revenge on, on the mother. Sorry if I spoiled it for you. The movie's old as fuck, but, um, it, it's, it's good. I, I really enjoyed this one. I liked all, I liked a lot of the characters from this movie. Um, when the killer wears this kind of like jester suit, I thought they could have utilized that a lot more. You only see one shot of him in the jester suit, and I thought it was creepy as hell, and I thought they could have utilized that a lot better. It's kind of like I know what you did last summer before I know what you did last summer in a way. You know what I mean? Mixed with a little bit of Friday the 13th in there, and I dug this one. I think some of the cinematography is really good too. Some of the kills are pretty good. Um, using a lot of, you know, keeping the killer in a shadow. You know what I mean? Like really nice lighting in this on some of the shots. But yeah, this one really worked for me. I really liked it. Coming at number 20 is Slumber Party Massacre. This was a ton of fun. This was, I loved all the girl characters in this movie. You know, the guy characters were this fucking useless and douchebags. Well, not really douchebags. They're fucking use useless. But it makes you love the girls that much more. The the Driller Killer, I thought, was pretty underrated. I thought his performance was pretty good. The way he walked, his physicality. You do get some decent kills in this. You get a pretty good chase sequence in the uh, high school gym around there or something like that. Where they, the Driller Killer chases this this girl in the um, the gymnasium and stuff. Going in the locker room and stuff like that. I thought that was a pretty pretty cool sequence, but th this was another one that surprised me. I thought it was just going to be another throwaway slasher, but I had a lot of fun with Slumber Party Massacre. Number 19 is Halloween 4, The Curse of Michael Myers. I'm not the biggest fan of Halloween 4. Um, I do like it, though. It's entertaining enough. I think Daniel Harris is great in this. The girl who plays Rachel is great. I like their, their relationship. Dr. Loomis is pretty good in this, you know, coming back, being his old obsessed self. I just, I'm not big on the performance of Michael, and you got to get that right for me. You got to get the mask right. You got to get the performance right. There are some good sequences in this when he fools the uh, girl there. Big tits, blonde girl. Who is she? The freaking, uh, the sheriff's daughter, Sheriff Meeker's daughter, I think it is. Where he fools her and stabs her with the freaking shotgun. I thought that whole sequence was um, crafted really well. I just don't, I think the, the physicality of Michael in here, I just don't buy that he could take all these people out when he's physically fighting them. Um, that's me, though. I mean, for me, you have to get Michael right, or it's it really uh, puts a damper on the movie for sure. Coming at number 18 is Halloween 2, the original Halloween 2. I like how this is a great continuation of the first Halloween movie. I do like Michael in this. I know a lot of people find him very stiff and robotic. I don't mind him too much. I still like Nick Castle a lot better in the original Halloween. But 
this kind of goes for more of your slasher type. You know, it's funny how Friday the 13th, when you know, wanted to rip off Halloween, then Halloween was like taking the Friday the 13th template of stock and slash, you know what I mean, into this movie. And I, I really like the third act in this movie. I think just the middle, it you know, the pacing kind of, the pacing's kind of slow and it needs, to, it needs to pick it up. And Jamie Lee Curtis was kind of wasted in this movie. But other than that, you still get a great score. Loomis is really great. I love how the movie opens where he's like, you don't know what death is. Love that. Love that so much. Number 17, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I really like this movie because it's about the killer. And I love that. I love how he's, you know, a traumatized kid. Grows up to be this killer and snaps at Christmas. It has a great kills and just some interesting stuff in it with Billy. You know, I like how you get to know Billy, you know, and see him grow up. And, you know, there's one terrifying scene when he's a kid and he's seeing his grandpa and his grandpa's not talking. And then this actor, man, just scares the life out of this kid, man. And I thought the performance was excellent. All the naughty ones, he punishes. You get Lenina Quigley in here. The classic antler kill. This movie could be a ton of fun, but it's also just a very interesting. I always like when they make it about the killer. Coming at number 16 is Friday the 13th Part 3. Just a really fun Jason movie. We get Richard Brooker. Dana Kimball is our, our final girl and Chris, which I don't mind. Um, I thought she was pretty resourceful. I thought she took Jason right on. I thought she laid a lot of damage to Jason. But Richard Brooker really setting that template for what we know as Jason. You know what I mean? Um, and just, you know, I felt this movie, they made Jason a lot more like Michael, like kind of creeping around things, you know, creeping around barn doors. He's hiding in the barn all the time and just kind of watching everyone. It has some great kills and these kills just absolutely amazing. And the third act, that's just awesome. You'll have a lot of fun with Friday the 13th part three for sure. Coming at number 15 is Psycho 3, just as where Psycho goes for more of the 80s camp you know, slasher feel. It's a lot of fun. The guy with the guitar is just a douchebag, but the way he goes out is awesome. Norman Bates, man, on Anthony Perkins, you know, really diving into the psyche again, psychological. And, you know, where we actually get to see him in mother's clothes and, and talking in her voice and stuff like that. You know, there's a, there's a great shot where he's kind of going after a woman a journalist, you know, up the stairs and everything like that. And you don't, don't see Norman's face. You just see the wig. And it's, the cinematography is really beautiful in it. And then you see kind of Norman just take out his dead mother. You know, she's all sewed up and, you know, hacking and slashing her at the end. And it's kind of weird with Psycho 2. They kind of say, well, that's not his real mother. And they got, this was his real mother. And then they kind of retcon that by this one. He said, no, she was just a Looney Tune. And his real mother was his real mother. So... Um, I don't know. They they kept like they they kept changing that during this franchise, but Psycho Three is a lot of fun. Coming at number fourteen, Charles Bronson's Ten to Midnight. I really like this one. Um, this is kind of an, another another one where they're focusing a, a lot on the killer, the naked man. I call him the naked killer. You know, wears gloves. He's pretty smart. He doesn't get blood on him. He's naked on his clothes, so he can always just shower. He always makes sure he has an alibi. And, you know, but Charles Bronson really gets to him. And when he gets to him, this guy kind of cracks. And this is where the guy's performance loses it for me. There's at times where he, there's at times he breaks his character. This actor goes really out of character. The third act is pretty crazy where he kills all the girls and he's going after Charles Bronson's daughter and all ends up at the street at the end. But there's also a really interesting thing with Charles Bronson done here where he plants evidence and he, you know, he falsifies evidence to get this killer. He just, he's been on the force too long. He knows this guy's dangerous. He knows he's guilty, but he just can't prove it. So he, you know, kind of takes the law into his own hands, manipulates and everything. And I kind of like that. I thought they should have dove more into that. You know what I mean? Of, of all that kind of stuff that was going on with Charles Bronson's character. But 10 to Midnight's a cult classic. A lot of people love this Charles Bronson fleck and... I have a good time with it. I thought it was pretty good. Coming at number 13 is Child's Play. I really like the first Child's Play. It's my it's my favorite Chucky movie. I love um, Brad Dorff in this movie as the voice of Chucky. And, you know, you see him at the beginning of the movie, too, where he puts himself into the doll. I like the more Hitchcock style to this one that Tom Holland does. I think Tom Holland's the director anyway, where he's, you know, slowly building the tension. 
You know what I mean? When the, the aunt is looking after Andy and, you know, she sees something in the corner of her eye, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Really building the tension. And when she gets killed, you know, this movie really ants up. And then when you finally see Chucky come alive, one of the greatest moments in horror. I said talk to me, damn it, or else I'm going to throw you in the fire. You stupid bitch, you filthy slut. Did you fuck with me? Always loved Child's Play. Scared the life out of me as a kid. Coming at number 12 was Maniac Cop. Now, this was a first time watch. And this really reminded me of almost like... um. A Death Wish style kind of movie. This this the mood of the film, all making New York a character and making it kind of scary. You know the streets of New York and everything like that. And we got a a cop who's killing people, killing ladies and stuff like that. And I I thought this was a really great movie. And, and I like how Bruce Campbell's in it, and they're kind of pointing the finger at Bruce Campbell. But we know better in this flick. You you just knew it wasn't Bruce Campbell, but. This really big cop. And, and again, it's one of those movies that's like playing into this fear. Like a, a cop should be the safest person you should be able to go to. If a girl's running at night from someone and she sees a cop, safest place should be the safest place on earth. So they're, they're tapping into this fear of this, you know, what if a cop was a freaking nutcase, right? And you get a lot of backstory with this cop and what happened and everything. We get this undercover cop girl posing as a hooker who teams up with Bruce Campbell to, to you know take down this uh maniac cop and i thought the movie was more like crime thriller it's, it's kind of started horror but went almost into action territory you know what i mean so but i really dug this movie you know, it's this high so I, I thought maniac cop was awesome coming at number 11 is friday the 13th i've talked about this movie lots i love the original friday the 13th i think it's a really good atmospheric camp slasher kick the door open for you know being more gory I love Pamela Voorhees in it. I wish they'd do more with her in future films. Hopefully we get something for all Friday of 13 fans. But I know a lot of people don't like the pacing of this. They think it's it, it's stock and slash. But uh, you know what? I love the atmosphere to it. And I love the performance of Betsy Palmer. Coming at number 10 is Friday the 13th Part 2. So you get better characters in this, I would say. Um, it's still running that same formula, but the kills are still really good. You get a great final girl in this with Ginny, which really elevates this movie. I think, I think the third act is really good too. And, you know, just a ton of fun. Again, I go with the Friday of 13th movies to have fun. Just, you know, fun slasher flicks. Coming at number nine is Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. This is another movie I have reviewed. I think this is probably the darkest version of Freddy. I think he looks awesome in this. I think he's terrifying in this. The movie kind of breaks its rules from the first movie and does its own thing, but there's something charming about that. You know, Jesse as the final boy, you know what I mean? I, I just love how it's kind of like this possession movie. I never liked it as a kid. I didn't like the, the storyline and everything, but I think it was a little ahead of its time. I appreciate all the little um things that's going for the middle of this movie is fantastic where freddy pops out of freaking jesse and he kills his friend he puts that smile on and puts his hat on then goes out into the real world like killing everyone at the uh in the pool party is like you are all my children now <laughs> right it was just he gets more uh, he gets a little more darker in this you know, you know what i mean i it feels that way anyway, and I love that about this movie. I'm not so big on the ending of this film, but the beginning is what nightmares are made of. That bus scene, on point. Coming at number eight is Silent Rage. You know, I really do consider this a slasher. This is Chuck Norris versus Michael Myers, everyone calls it. I didn't see that as a kid. I saw Silent Rage way before I saw Halloween. And I do love this movie. I mean, this movie is, you know, it's a slasher, man. It's a Chuck Norris as the sheriff taking out john kirby trying to take out john kirby an unstoppable killing machine made by these doctors you know this guy's mind is already messed up and they're trying to they're trying to play god so they can you know advance you know their their motives are to advance humanity they're really playing with something they don't really understand it has those frankenstein themes in it you know what i mean and john kirby's this you know once he's gets brought back to life through this um where he can heal and everything through this concoction they make he becomes unstoppable because he has a freaking twisted brain, right? And he's stronger, he's faster, you can't kill him because he can heal. But you get the end fight here between Chuck Norris. Chuck Norris does a lot of fighting in this movie. 
the bar scene is awesome. They throw that in there. He takes out a whole biker gang just the you know, just so you can see Chuck Thors do what he's really good at, and that's martial arts. There are some really good moments where he kills the the doctor and his wife in the house. I thought all that was really good. I love the performance of John Kirby where he's very primitive like and ape like the way he moves, but Silent Rage is, you know, I've been watching this one ever since I was a kid. Always love this one. Coming at number seven is Psycho 2. I love me Norman Bates. I love the original Psycho, but Psycho 2 is on point, man. Who would have thought this movie would be th this good? One of my favorite kills. It just terrified me as a kid. The, the knife kill in the mouth. And, you know, this, this the, the movie starts off with Norman is, is better. He's healed, essentially. And he tries to make a new life for himself. He goes back to his home, but they start playing with his brain. You know, the, the sister of Marion Crane and her daughter start playing with his brain again. And they, they, they release mother out of his brain. You know what I mean? Mother comes back. You know what I mean? He starts off as um, an innocent and becomes the villain by the end of it. It's actually tragedy. It's sad, but it is, it's such a great sequel to a classic movie. And Anthony per Perkins may be even better in this movie as far as his performance goes. Coming out number six is Visiting Hours. Now, this is a, the greatest hospital slasher ever. This stars Michael Ironside as the killer. And uh, Lee Grant is this journalist. He goes and follows her home, attacks her. She survives, and she's in the hospital for the rest of the movie. And he's trying to get her in this hospital. And he's a misogynistic killer. He's interesting because this is a, this is a killer where this movie is about the killer. And you get to see why he is the way he is. And the movie deals with themes of um, violence. How when violence traumatizes you, it can affect you. And how sometimes you have to use violence. Because Lee Grant is this pacifist. And she has to use violence to get out of this situation. And so it deals with a lot of... It has something to say. Visiting Hours... Is a film that has something to say. I won't. I wouldn't say it has the best kills. It has a lot of great tension in it. A great performance by Michael Ironside. The ending's pretty solid, but the whole first twenty minutes of this movie is really solid, man. Really scary stuff. Coming at number five is Maniac. Now this was a first time watch, guys, and I fell in love with this movie. I have no idea why people aren't talking more about this film. And get I see the trend here. Another one about a killer. Um, Joe Spinal plays you know, this maniac killer taking scalps from women, putting them on mannequins, and he's talking to these mannequins. He has some serious mother's m mother issues, as you find out. And you really got to pay attention to the dialogue when he's talking to himself all the time, and the performance is so good. I absolutely loved the performance in this movie. Like, there's times in this movie where you're like, he's such a chameleon. He can like wine and toast with this. Like, he starts, you know courting this girl like you know dating her and stuff like that and he's very like seems like a really nice guy seems like you know he has money seems like he's he's a bit classy and then there's other times like where he's with a hooker and i don't think in that moment that he was gonna kill her that then he just freaking something in him snaps you know what i mean and he strangles her and there's some good moments of tension some the way some of the scenes were crafted with this blonde girl blonde nurse i think where he's following her down in the subway and stuff like that, I thought it was really well crafted. And then the movie just went places I didn't expect it to go. Like it, it goes really dark and gets really dark and macabre kind of fantasy where, you know, things are happening in his mind that we're seeing, but they're not really happening. And the way it ends with his mom coming out of the grave and then all his victims are, like are coming alive and just ripping him apart and stuff like that. And this is all done in his mind. And I'm just like, this was pretty fantastic, man. The themes of, of death and being disturbed and how, you know, again, trauma, serious trauma, the way someone could really affect someone. And it's all done through the performance and the writing and this character. Just, I love Maniac. You, you all need to see it. And more people need to talk about it, man. It was a great movie. All right, the top four, guys. This going to be no surprise. If you guys have been watching me long enough, you know where this is all going. Number four, Friday of 13, part four, the final chapter. This is one of the greatest slashers ever. Really is a great template of how to make a slasher. Love Ted White. He's brutal. The kills are awesome. And my favorite final girl in Trish 
and you know, brother Tommy starting the Tommy Jarvis trilogy here. It's just awesome. Great flick. And coming at number three is Dream Warriors, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. This is a, it's just a really fun Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Again, great creativity, great practical effects, but great characters. The way all these Dream Warriors, these kids in this hospital, and Nancy guiding them, just awesome characters in this with Kincaid and, you know, Kristen and um, Tara. She was an awesome character. And you know how they how they go into Freddy's world and battle him is just awesome. I'm not huge on uh, Nancy falling for one of Freddy's tricks, and that's how she gets killed. I don't mind her, uh, you know, getting killed, sacrificing his, pr to protect these kids, sacrificing herself. I just don't like the way she falls for it. But Dream Warriors is awesome and with an awesome freaking soundtrack. Coming at number two is Jason Lives. You guys know I love Friday the Thirteenth Part Six. It's entertaining as hell it hits so many movie genres it's got comedy you know horror it's got um a little bit of action in there it's you know it's it's just great and i love jason in this the the style of universal monsters and everything like that you know the way they pay homage to frankenstein and stuff like that another great score another great rock music in this um i just love this movie it's just so bloody entertaining and so accessible and, you know, from and adding lore and building upon the lore and the opening of this film where they, you know, the a lightning bolt brings Jason back. It's awesome. It's Terminator Jason, man. Great flick. But coming at number one, the greatest slasher film in the 80s for me is the original Nightmare on Elm Street. It is the crown jewel of the slasher films as far as I'm concerned. Wes Craven just making something so unique and creative, having this, you know, Dynamic Night Stalker who hunts your dreams may sound silly on paper, but the way he executes it is just amazing. Robert England's performance is great. I love Heather Lankenkamp as Nancy. The characters are great. Tina's death is one of the best kills in uh, in horror history. Maybe the best kill ever. The score is fantastic. The movie has something to say about you know the sins of the the parents are passed on to these kids. The kids are suffering through this. And seeing this final girl battle back, facing her, the nightmare, facing her darkest fears and conquering them like good versus evil, man. I just absolutely love this movie. This movie is horror gold. If it wasn't for that last freaking five minutes for that la lazy ending, man. But other than that, man, Nightmare on Elm Street just created one of the scariest horror icons ever. And it's one of the great it's one of the greatest movies ever. As far as I'm concerned. So that's it guys. That is my top 30 slasher film from the 80s. I hope you really enjoyed it. Again, comment down below. Like the video. Let me know what some of your favorite slasher films are. And all that jazz. I would really like to hear it. I'd really like to you know, converse with you guys. It's been too long. It's been way too long since we uh, were in the comment section all the time. Yeah, let's keep the train rolling. Let's get some more content out there. Thank you for watching, guys. I really appreciate all of you. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. I'll see you next time, and I'll see you in the movies. Cheers.